think you have to read out the gravitational effect of those planets. Hi, I'm Lee, and this is NASA Now. What do people around the world use every day that holds the solutions to the mysteries of the universe? And what's the connection between space exploration and your favorite video game? Find out later in the program, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. Not only does NASA use scientists, engineers, and astronauts for its missions, it employs artists and musicians, too. For NASA's 135th and final shuttle mission, Emmy-nominated composer Bear McCreary wrote fanfare for STS-135, specifically to commemorate the final space shuttle mission. It premiered July 8th when Atlantis lifted off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, creating an emotional and musical backdrop for the final shuttle mission. Now, let's take a look at the past. In 1967, the first pocket electronic calculator was created by Texas Instruments. The calculator was based on mathematical tools like the abacus, developed around 2000 BC, and the mechanical calculator, developed in the 17th century. We asked some intriguing questions at the beginning of the program about something game developers use to make video games and NASA scientists use to unravel the mysteries of the universe. Chief Scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center Jim Garvin is here to tell us one answer that sums it all up. Science is all about asking questions and there are tools to solve the problems raised by the questions and the best tool for the kind of stuff I like to do, as much as I love looking at all, is, is using mathematics. I mean, it's free. It's kind of the way you describe things so other people can understand them. Math is the tool that allows you to be really dangerous in space science. You know, if you want to train to be an Olympic athlete or play on a Super Bowl team, you got to do a lot of work. It's painful. And then you win the big stuff, it's all cool. Well, math is the training to give you the tools in your mind, on your computer, on your piece of paper, to solve the problems. Because really, when we send robots to do our jobs, how do those robots work? They work through the beauty and elegance of mathematics that simulates how we would be there without being there. So when you play a video game, what makes it actually work the way it does? Mathematical programming. Because otherwise, when you hit someone, they wouldn't behave right. And so that's why math is important. So as a person interested in studying space, what you can learn from space, about space, where you want to go in space. Getting there takes math. How do you calculate where the rocket would take you? Why do you need a rocket? Because math says you can't get off the planet without one. Why not? Because the planet has gravity. Well, how do you know that? By measuring things about the planet. And all that takes some pretty simple tools in math. So if you pay attention enough, you'll be armed to be the Olympian in space by having those tools. Our machines, our robot tools, they generate information that needs to be analyzed. And the simplest analysis you would learn, you know, in middle school allows you to start. And as you get a little more advanced, you can ask tougher questions. Well, topography, the leaf of a planet's a little more complicated. You need a little more math. Maybe a little trigonometry and geometry. It's all fun. You add that, now you can do more. You can ask, well, why does the planet look that way? Or the sun. As you get a little more, you can build maps into things we call models. How would it behave? If I dropped water on the moon, what would happen? Well, I need to know the physics of water, the math that describes that physics to ask, would the water just stay there? No, it wouldn't. It's a vacuum. The water doesn't want to. And you'll learn in physics why that is. The math is the tool that lets you ask those questions. And you can start as simple as knowing the numbers and get more and more advanced to solve harder and harder problems to be a scientist. In fact, there are jobs that students could do now. Sometimes through the internet, we make them available. We have a whole service of Mars and we ask students to go using simple computer tools and a little bit of math to count impact craters. 
But the more impact craters there are, little holes on a planetary surface, tells us about the age of that surface. We have other tools that allow students to do things for weather. They can calculate things about how the Earth's climate is varying by just having a little weather station in their school. And by measuring simple things, doing a little bit of statistics, just making tables, seeing what trends are like, the simplest algebra, they can provide a keystone piece of information about how another world works. And we build into giant models how the whole world climate system works. Using a little bit of math, a little bit of ingenuity, it would get you involved in understanding our planet, the sun, the moon, kind of cool, Mars, or anywhere you want to go. Did you know that pi is one of the most important mathematical constants? No, not the pi you eat, but the math formula, whose value is the ratio of any circle's circumference to its diameter. The current value recorded for pi equals 3.14 and has been calculated to 5 trillion decimal places to the right of the decimal point, which is an incredibly small fraction. Now it's time to check out what's up. If you're heading outside to count stars, choose a clear night in a place far away from city lights. You'll see about 2,000 stars. With an amateur telescope, you'll see millions more. According to astronomers, there are 10 to the 12th power of stars in our galaxy and there are perhaps as many as 10 to the 12th power galaxies in our universe, which means there are about 10 to the 24th power of stars in our universe. That's a lot of stars and a lot of possibilities. Now that you've learned some of the great things that NASA does with math, why not test your skills? Dr. Garvin mentioned a NASA project where students collect data to help understand Earth's climate. You can find out more about this on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus using the featured lesson, Meteorology, How Clouds Form. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when scientists prepare to take a bite out of an asteroid. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.